At administration and faculty politics, Carver was less adept. Booker T. Washington, perhaps the nation's most influential black man in the early years of the 20th century, was increasingly away from the campus. Carver found himself embroiled in bitter rivalries that eventually would cost him the chairmanship of the agriculture department. Carver expected total deference. He didn't expect anybody to question his decisions or his actions. And so as a consequence of that, I think they, they clashed. Carver quit Tuskegee several times. He sent in his resignation. Never was accepted. <laughs> but Carver believed in the work of Tuskegee to the point that when he died, he left his entire fortune to Tuskegee. He stayed in large part because of his loyalty to his adopted region and its struggling farmers and to the hundreds of earnest students, his children, who idolized him. As his tenure at Tuskegee approached two decades, George Washington Carver was well known and respected throughout the South and among agriculturalists in other areas of the country. Then, in late 1915, an event took place that put Carver on the path to international stardom. Booker T. Washington unexpectedly died. They had a new president. Washington had only called himself the principal. He'd never said he was the president. But the new person, uh, Robert Russo Moton, called himself the president. He was very good, but things changed a lot for Carver as soon as Moton took over. I mean, Carver was starting to want to withdraw into his laboratory a little bit more. And he pretty much told the new president that he was going to do that. He didn't really ask, and he went along with it. So suddenly Carver was able to control his own destiny. Within a year, he had been elected to the board of the National Agricultural Society and became the first black man to be elected a fellow in Britain's Royal Society for the Encouragement of the Arts. Yet few of Carver's inventions ever found wide use, and only three ideas were patented. Two for paint produced from clays and one for cosmetics, leading some to question Carver's scientific legacy. 